if you're someone who takes care of the ESA administration, then you should be very good with the CLI, the command line interface of the Cisco ESA. Now, there are a few commands that you should know when you're dealing with the ESA, and we're going to uh, discuss those commands today. We're going to check what those commands are, and we're going to see all those options. And what are the output? Uh, what are the outputs that we should expect? And uh, yeah, let's go ahead. So the first command I wanted to talk about is work queue. I hit enter. It, it gives me three um, three uh, three pieces of information: status as of so and so, status in terms of if it's operational or if it's paused, if it's stopped, and so on. How many messages are there in the work queue at the moment? There's zero because I'm not sending any uh, messages. Uh, the options uh, or basically the actions that I can perform, uh, I can check the status. I can pause the work queue. Uh, you may want to do it uh, in case it's required. Um, other than that, I mean, if it's not a business requirement, if, the, if there's no need to do it, don't even look at that option, okay? Uh, now then we have rate. We can um, check the output like we got messages zero when we ran the work queue command. Now we want to check uh, how many messages are there in the work queue after every um, 10 seconds, we can go ahead and run the rate command and mention how many seconds. It's not recommended to run mm, uh, this command at any number below 10, especially when the CPU is hit. Do not do that. Uh, you can go for any number higher than 10 that, or, or 10 itself. That's not a problem. Otherwise, you can actually go for 5, 2, 1. That's completely your choice, but it's not recommended. Uh, by the end of the video, if I got time, I'll show you how it hits the CPU. Um, okay, let's let's go for 10 right now. So uh, it shows time uh, pending, how many emails are pending, how many came in, how many went out, right? So as you can see, there are no emails. Now, if I try to send an email right now, you'll find that it shows one or two or three accordingly. Okay, I'm going to send a couple of emails uh, and see if the number pops up, right? So it was able to gather two emails and it was able to process those emails. Right, you should see this information here. Now, this is about the work queue. Right, if you don't want to go for work queue, well, I sent another two emails. So this, these are not these two emails. Okay, just to keep that uh, clear. Okay, now you can run this command this way as well: work queue rate and then mention ten directly. So if you run this command this way, you get the similar output. Now, you want to do this if you don't want to go through all of that. Right, with the with the delivery queue. You have the command of top hosts. You can run the top host command, hit enter again, and you'll see all this information. So these are the domains that are mentioned in your delivery queue at the moment. There are no active recipients, right? The very first column, it talks about active recipients. And there are no active recipients right, right now, so we're all good. Now there's a short form of running this command as well. So you can do an active underscore RCPTS. Hit enter and you see a similar output, right? It mentions the destination host here. It mentions the active recipients, how many connections out, how many delivered recipients, how many soft bounces, and how, how many hard bounces as well. Also, it talks about uh, this particular line, hosts marked with a star uh, or an asterisk. Uh, we're down as of the last delivery attempt, but there's uh, there are no hosts that are down. Uh, that are down as we can see in this output, right? Another important command that I want to talk about is status details. So let me go down. Yeah. Status detail. You, it won't auto complete. You, if you run the tab key, if you hit the tab key, it's not going to auto complete. So you have to type in the whole command. Status detail. It gives you tons of information. Status as of this, since when the device has been up, last counter reset, never. Uh, system status online, old message, no messages, and the feature keys, how many days are pending and whatnot. Uh, the counters as well. This is extremely important when you're uh, uh, someone who administers uh, the ESA, right? So it gives you all this information, the DNS hard bounces, 5XX, and so on. The, there, there, is, there are tons of important information in here. Uh, the gauges are right here. So if you take a look at the gauges, you see the overall CPU load is 100% uh, for some reason, and it's on 2% here, 84% on anti-spam. I got something going on uh, in my anti-spam engine. 
I'm going to take a look at that afterwards. But yeah, this is this is extremely important. So whenever you run this command, the first part of the command is something that I usually check uh, thoroughly. This part, or usually this part to be uh, more specific, and the last part, which is this one. Although all the information in this is extremely important. But I usually deal with the first parts. That's why I just check that much uh, usually. Okay. So uh, yeah. This is something that's extremely important. And if, if this stays up, your device may go into resource conservation, which is on zero right now in my device, right? I can run this command again just by pressing the up key, right? And hit enter. And I see that it's 79 right now. So that's good. Okay, okay. Now, also I wanted to uh, talk about this. So you see the uh, opsense, it says Monday, July, Zero four, and today is uh, August two, uh, like, like almost a month, right? So there's a process called uh, Hermes. Um, this is not recommended. First of all, if you go for it, you're gonna damage your your email um, flow, and it's gonna cause a lot of damage uh, to your business in case your email, um, you know, services go down. So what you can do is you can go to services, uh, you can go to diagnostic services, hit enter, and then you have this option of Hermes right here. You hit enter. You see this option is actually not visible, right? It's a hidden option. You don't see this option here. So when you run this command, it's Hermes, and then you can say restart. So if you restart it, or you can just check the status as well. So uh, Hermes has been up for 28 days, right? You get the gig, right? So if I go ahead and say Hermes and I say restart, I hit enter. Do you want to restart Hermes? Well, yes, that's what I want to do. Enter the number of seconds. No problem. Okay. It's doing it right now. It's restarting the Hermes. And uh, again, it's a hidden command. It's not recommended that you do it. Uh, not at all. Any of any of the stuff that I do, whichever is harmful, uh, do not do it. Uh, yeah, I'll just keep it uh, mentioned right now for everything that I do in this video, <laughs> just to make sure. Hermes will be up in a moment. Run the status command for Hermes. Okay, nothing required now. I wanted to show you this status detail. If I run status detail now, okay, couldn't obtain mail stats. The queue is not mounted. Well, it is not mounted, but it will be mounted. Okay, let's see. What do we see for work queue? Failed to get work queue status. The queue is not mounted. Okay, let's give it a couple more minutes and see. Status detail. Okay, let's wait for some time and see. When it comes up, okay, so nothing, okay, okay, that's good, that's good. Some of the parts are coming up, okay, if I run work queue now, bravo, okay, status detail. Now, when I run status detail, you see it says the device has been up since, well, it, well, you get, you get the thing, right? what I was talking about. When I saw up since before, it was July 4. Right now, right now it's showing August 2. The only thing I did was restart Hermes. And uh, yeah, again, that's that's not recommended to run it no, unless and until you, you don't have, uh, I mean, don't do it. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. And yes, it is harmful for your email flow and your email services. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Another important command to check would be if config. Um, when you run this command, this is the output you get. This, it talks about your interfaces that have been configured on your appliance. There's another way to run this command. Otherwise, uh, let me just talk about these options right here. Um, these, these are the ones you should be interested in. New, if you want to create a new interface, uh, edit if you want to modify uh, the already existing interfaces. In this case, it's just management. If you have defined any groups, um, then you can use this command to define interface groups. Um, and then you have the delete option, remove an interface. That's pretty much it. I, I don't want to go into detail of that. So you have if config. Otherwise, you have interface config as well. 
it gives you the same options, right? So, right, so you have these two options, and uh, these are pretty much the same. Now, okay. When it comes to the hardware of, of the ESA, you can run the IP check command as well. Again, it's a hidden command. If you just try to auto-complete it, you won't be able to. So IP check, you hit enter, and you get all this information. It talks about the feature keys, the power supplies, NIC, RAM, and so on. So I got four GBs of RAM installed in my appliance, and I've got other information as well towards the top of this. Um, man, so this is a, this is an extremely important command that gives you tons of information about uh, the hardware of your appliance specifically, right? So, uh, yeah. Also, I wanted to uh, lastly check uh, or just touch upon this command of cluster. Uh, you have the cluster config, cluster check, and cluster mode, these three commands. Let's talk about cluster mode first. When I hit enter, it talks about which one do you want to go for. Choose the configuration mode for subsequent changes. Okay, so if I select, for example, cluster, that is number one. I hit enter, I'm at the cluster level now. Before this, I was at the machine level, right? Right now, I'm at the cluster level, as you can see. Now, if I make any changes, uh, that will be at the cluster level. However, if I want to run certain commands uh, that are not available at the at the cluster it's going to ask me to you know you want to go at the machine mode as you can see right here i hit enter and uh, it it throws me at the machine mode at that time and it shows me the output as well and i'm at the machine mode right now right so in the same way you have the other two commands as well so if you run the cluster check command this command is restricted to the cluster mode you want to go for it y is selected by default and as soon as I hit enter, it tells me what's really going on. What is the inconsistencies uh, between the appliances in your ESA, uh, internal system data at cluster level, Cisco.com has an invalid configuration. Well, that's good to know. I can ignore or force the entire cluster use the default settings, right? I, I'm just going to ignore it for now. And uh, yeah, it's an important command when it comes to uh, clusters. And if you're not if you don't know what you're dealing with don't do not you know make any changes or select any any option uh, just for the sake of it right so you have cluster config this ha this has a ton of options if i had enter you see all of these options right here um well just to keep it short uh you can use the list command to list all the machines in the cluster you can remove a machine from the cluster using this command or if you don't want to remove, you can disconnect as well. So that is just temporarily detach machines uh, from the cluster, right? You have other commands as well, connection status, communication, which you might use frequently. But yeah, this is uh, pretty much it with the cluster that I wanted to touch in this one. Well, I suppose that's pretty much it for the video today. It's gonna get longer if I literally talk about all the commands, it's already longer than I expected. And uh, yeah, pretty much done. So again, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, like the video, and uh, put in some comments if you have any questions or anything. Check out the description. I usually put some important stuff in there. If there's nothing, then it's okay. You can just skip it. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful day. Goodbye.